Hey guys, this is Ryan Hall. Some of you may know me as Frog Bill Go from DeviantArt. Uh, I've had a couple people ask me for tutorials uh, on my drawing methods, so I decided to put together a series of videos. Um, some things I'm going to be going over throughout the videos is Photoshop tricks, digital painting, environments, characters, and possibly full uh, walkthroughs. Um, this video is based off of drawing pointers. Now the reason why I'm starting here is because I thought it'd be a good idea to go kind of step by step. Um, so you start off with the drawing phase and work your way into painting. So painting is going to come a little bit later. Um, uh, these techniques that I'm going to be going through in this video are this, like things that I've picked up along the way to help me speed up my drawing, uh, things to look out for when you're drawing. So it's not really going to be an, it's not going to be an anatomy lesson or perspective lesson. I, I, I think there's plenty of those books out there. I, I think that when you know you've already got in, you're already into drawing. Um, uh, you kind of want to start to find ways to push the basics. So that's what I'm hoping to do here. Um, so uh, the program I'm going to be using is Sketchbook Pro, and I'm drawing on a, a Wacom Cintiq 12WX. Uh, I highly recommend the 12WX if you're serious about drawing uh, and you want to pursue it in a career. Um, they run for $1,000. Uh, the tw I think it's the 21WX. Uh, runs for like 2,000, 2,500. Uh, the problem with those, I don't feel like that a bigger screen is better um, because you can zoom in. I mean, you know, you're going to be taking up more des desktop space. You can't take it with you on trips, that kind of thing. Uh, but if you like to work on a bigger surface, go for it. And but I, I personally think the the uh, 12 works just fine. All right, I'm in Photoshop here. I'm trying to get out of it. Okay. So, here is Sketchbook Pro. Um, I will try to talk about the shortcut keys on here as I go, so you guys aren't like lost as to what I'm doing. Um, right now, I just have a red pencil selected. Normally, when I start off my drawings, wh whether it's on paper or digitally, I start off with a different color, just so you can lay down uh, you lay down lines in one color and then go over that color in a darker line so you don't have to worry about erasing. Uh, you know, you see those 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 blue pencil drawings that everybody does. I, yeah, it looks pretty, but it, I, I, it's also, you know, it's very effective in helping you separate your final line from your rough lines. So uh, I'm going to start off first with a a uh, just a three fourths angle head. Go over some pointers on that. So of course, you know, just start off with a circle and then get your general shape and I go really quick I'm not worried about how sloppy it is because this red line isn't gonna matter in like 15 minutes so one thing that I noticed a lot of people doing um, mind you this is gonna be a male human head here uh, a lot of people will put the neck too far too far in or too far out on characters uh, so Mind that, mind you that uh, on a on a bigger, more masculine character, your neck kind of comes out th further. And on kids and stuff, they go further in like this, and then they'll have more round head on the kid. Um, also, with female characters, you also have like a more round, uh, curved in inner neck, and your ear will be up here. So I'm just kind of figuring out the shape of the character right now. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going with like a male three fourths or three quarter view. So, um, sketching in where the eyes are right now. Here's my center line, and the eyes are roughly center of from the height of the head. They're normally in the center right there. Um, another thing I noticed that a lot of people do, or things to look out, is this space right here. Uh, people tend to push the eyeball too far out to the edge so it looks like it's going to pop out of the character's head or it's too far in and makes the character look cross-eyed so mind the gap um, pop, put in the nose here just figure out the shape and look I'm going really fast because with my lines not worrying about anything it keeps the energy in the drawing and all that energy is going to be pulled out once you start putting on the final lines like a, like uh, naturally when you put on a bold flat a uh, uh, flat line it's just going to lose that energy um, 
so you want to keep it ener energetic up front. Sketch it in the ear. Where's the chin? I don't like this point. All right, so I got a pretty basic face. Um, one thing to look out for also when you're drawing eyes, uh, I notice that uh, I'm guilty of this all the time, and I need to check myself on this constantly. Is characters will get look cross-eyed very easily. Uh, one way to check that is let's go over here and draw another head real quick. You got I'm drawing exaggerated eyes. So you have your let's say here's your irises. Watch out for this space here, and this space here, this space here, this space here, this space here. So these spaces should pretty much read about the same on both sides. So if you have a gap down down this area, you should be have a gap down here as well. So I'm gonna undo all that stuff. Same thing with when you put in the pupil. Pupil on the far right, it's touching the wall of the eye. So I'm gonna touch it on make a touch on the other wall of the eye. So that's just like a general rule I kind of go with to keep eyes looking like they're not cross-eyed. Another thing to do, see right now I don't feel comfortable with it still, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the image and mirror the canvas. And what that does it is allows me to see my mistakes. Now to you, like being a, a you know a, another person looking at me at my drawing, uh, you may not notice the little flaws that pop up. But I'm telling you, if you flip your drawing, uh, if you mirror it and look at the you know look at it in the other direction, you're going to start to see where your flaws are and where things you thought looked good because you're looking through you, the creator is looking at it through his or her own eyes. So you might want to flip it and see what uh, see if you see any um, flaws okay so oh also another quick thing to do this happens in <laughs> anime drawings a lot adding that little shine like that and the iris is um, remember the eye has a certain amount of um, roundness to it so you're gonna have like you can have a certain amount of darkness around the edge of the iris I'm um, going back to this guy, so I think he looks pretty good. I'm going to touch him up while I'm in this phase here, the rough phase. Pretty happy with how it looks right now. It's kind of tightening up spots around his nose. Um, remember, watch that space on the side of the eye there. Alright, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks right now. So I'm going to put on some more final lines. So uh, on paper, uh, normally I would just lightboard it. Uh, if you guys don't have a lightboard, I highly suggest just getting a glass desk that has maybe a, maybe a fogged glass desk. You can get them at Ikea. Um, and then you just put a lamp underneath it and you shine the light up, turn up all the other lights in the room and you just if you draw your original drawings your scratch drawings on like regular sketchbook paper or typing paper and then you uh you're able you'll be able to lightboard onto bristleboard which is pretty thick I, I used to do that all the time when i was making comics um it worked just fine but since i'm using a computer i'm going to just lower the opacity on this on this here and quote unquote uh lightboard it on a different layer so I'm going to flip my image back the other way. And now, this is what I was saying, is get a darker color pencil. So I'm setting my pencil to black. And I'm going to put in the more uh, fine lines. So I didn't have to worry about erasing like at all. Um, at this phase, if you're doing pencils, you might have to erase. But if you have a, see there's my erase aka undo <laughs> um, but instead of um, erasing you, you just try to get like a very well designed rough underneath and I, I used to make the the mistake of going oh that looks good enough I, I, I should be able to just put the, the final pencils on without like actually figuring out where the person is so I'll be like you know 
there, I'll just add a head there, add an arm there, add a leg there. It, I'll add a whole crowd of people there without even like designing it, and you end up spending more time when you are ruining your final piece if you don't lay it all out. So it's like the me uh, measure twice, cut once kind of uh, theory that will save you a lot of time. Um, so you can see I'm still kind of going pretty quick with these lines. It's kind of sketchy right now. I'm not just for the sake of this video. I'm going pretty quick. Normally I can I slow things down, but I try to keep my line speed quick. So what I mean by that is when I put my line down, I try to go fast and as opposed to going slow. These lines, as you can see, this slow line gets really crooked and wonky. This one, this one, are all super smooth and they come to a taper. Uh, that'll really help give your character energy. So if you go to this, let's say this part with the eye right here, I'm just going to do a quick line and then do a quick line out. You know, of course you might have to erase a couple times, but you can ghost, ghost swipe over the drawing to make sure you get the right spot. So, anyway, you can see where that's kind of going. Um, I'm gonna keep going here to another uh, to another face. Delete everything. I'll keep that rough underneath. Um, let's see. New layer. All right. So I'm gonna go back to another color. Try blue this time. Um, I'm gonna do a side view of a head. So, side view of a head, things to look out for. You got your basic circle, and he's gonna be look, this person's gonna be looking left. Uh, again, watch the neck and the throat here. So with a guy, I'm drawing, I'm drawing a guy, so the bigger dude kind of model has the neck that's further out. And then on a kid, or a, a lankier person or a smaller person, the neck would be something more like in here. Um, but the ear should hit right about here. The jawline, eh, that's looking about right. There we go. There's a jawline, the ear falls into it. But so here's your whole head length. Your eye line is going to be right about the middle. And then you're going to take from the length from here to here and have that, and that's where your nose is going to be, and then you have that line, and that's where basically your mouth's going to be. So, I can fill in the area. And then you got your eye there. So, The more rounded back. There we go. I had too sh too small the back of the head going on there. All right, and of course the eye lines up with the top of the ear, and the nose lines up with the bottom of the ear. And there you go, side view. And of course I would just lower the opacity on this, and then do my final lines once I feel comfortable with it. Um, same thing with. The, now the speed drawing there. Uh, the same thing with the human body. Um, try to capture the form. Uh, as fast as you can. So you got your, I'm trying to think of a pose real quick, uh, just a basic like superhero pose. Alright, let's see. Arm out, just capturing the basic shape real fast. Not even worrying about what it looks like. capturing the spine and I'll sit there in like a park or something or like a coffee shop and just draw people walking by as fast as I can because they're just walking by and I'll try to just capture that person like within like 10-15 seconds there you go